Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. I am Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about Photomatics 4.2. If you've never used Photomatics 4.2, it is my favorite, bar none, hands down, favorite HDR processing software. I do not get paid by Photomatics to say that, and I do not get paid by Photomatics to do these tutorials, or HDR Soft, which is the creator of Photomatics. Um, I just like this program. I've processed thousands of photos in it, and I'm going to process thousands more, especially after the, re the new release of Photomatics Pro 4.2. So I start my HDR process by opening up Photomatix 4.2 and dragging and dropping my RAW files directly into uh, Photomatix. There's another way you can do it. You can go to the load bracketed photos over here and it's going to bring up the same window pane you have here. I just skip that step by dragging and dropping right in. I don't show the intermediary 32-bit HDR image because our monitors can't even really show you a true 32-bit HDR image so I don't see the point in seeing that. Now, if at any time you need help with the process with uh, Photomatix Pro, they've created an awesome user's manual that you can access right up here. You go to help and you select user's manual, and they've got a great user's manual that breaks down all of the functions in Photomatix Pro. I always set mine to align source images. Also, if by any chance you don't, you forget what one of these settings does, you can just hover over it and it will tell you what it does. I always select align source images. I always have them cropped. For the most part, I'm using by matching features, and I'm, I'm telling you all this stuff. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it this way. You can do do it whatever way you you prefer. This is just my process. I always do by ma matching features because I'd say about 80% of my HDR images these days are shot handheld. Um, so in that case, I use the matching features because it helps for rotational movement. The correcting by horizontal or vertical shifts is helpful. It's much faster, but it's also helpful if you're on a tripod. I do include the perspective correction and by the default action of 15%. I always select remove ghosts and for the most part I'm in automatic and I keep the detection to normal but there are some cases where you want to do selective de where the selective deghosting tool and I'm going to show you that for tutorial purposes. I used to reduce the noise in just the underexposed images only but now I found a aftermarket noise reduction software that I really do like so I stick with that and I don't select that anymore. It's usually a good idea to do it in those underexposed areas because that's where the noise likes to hang out and when you throw a tone mapping party the noise likes to come and they all come out in that point so sometimes it's good to do that on the underexposed images usually at about 80 percent default. Always reduce chromatic aberration so you run the risk of you know you can get rid of all those nasty uh, chromatic aberrations those little cyan and magenta little lines that get formed between one area of contrast and another area of contrast. Typically like around buildings you'll see it on the roofs, you'll see it on pillars, and so, so on and so forth. Raw conversion settings, I don't do anything with that. I leave that the same. I do that stuff in the camera before I take my pictures. So if you saw my process, I drag and drop my raw files directly into Photomatix. I don't do anything to them beforehand. I don't change them into TIFFs. I don't do any uh, crazy camera raw adjustments to them. I don't really, to me that doesn't really help my process. I like the look that I get from my raw images that are drag, dragged and dropped right into uh, Photomatix itself. So this is the selective deghosting tool. If by chance these propellers were moving and I wanted to stop that motion, and I could have in one of my in one of my photos from before, I can select that area just like a marquee tool. I use my left tool, I click and drag around it and if I press preview deghosting it'll show me the movement that's happening or not happening there and you can show that by right clicking inside that box and setting any one of the photos that you want that to come from so if you notice that in your in your negative two exposure value there was less movement than in your plus two because of the exposure time you go ahead and select that negative two and uh, it would go ahead and do that for you I keep this select in quick selection mode. Otherwise, you have to drag your mouse over and right click and mark that area as a ghosted area. So I keep it in quick selection mode so it knows that I want that to be my de ghosted area and press OK. So I've made a troubleshooting chart for Photomatix Pro that helps you in the tone mapping process. So uh, I'm going to have this posted on my blog, everydayhdr.com. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link on the YouTube site and if you're looking at this through my blog then you'll go ahead and see it while you're watching this through the blog. But this gives you an idea of what to do in the event that you have 
uh, an area that's tricky during your tone mapping process. So this is the tone mapping pane that you're going to see. If you chose to skip the intermediary tone mapping 32-bit uh, image, then you'll go right into the tone mapping part. You won't see that 32-bit image. If you selected the intermediary one, you're going to have to say that you want to tone map it. I always do details enhancer. I don't really do the tone compressor at all. And I always have it set to tone mapping, not exposure fusion. I'm going to go ahead and set this to default so I can clear all my settings. One of the things that I've liked that Photomatix or HDR Soft has done with Photomatix 4.2 is really streamlined this user interface. They, it's, it's clean, it's crisp, I like it now, it looks really nice. Another thing they've done is made the ability to put your presets into categories and look at your presets in a double pane window. They've also done a lot of work on their own presets. In the past, Photomatix or HDR Soft did not create very good presets, in my opinion, for HDR processing. However, I think the ones that they have in here now are much better, especially the ones in the realistic section. I'm going to go back to my presets. Now, how I approach my HDR processing is, is an experimentation process. It's, okay, when I move this slider, it does this. When I move that slider, it does that. And again, if at any time you need help, go to help, go to user's manual, and they've got a great Photomatix Pro user manual right there at your fingertips that goes over everything and how these slider bars work. I keep, kick my strength up to 100 because I'm in here doing an HDR image. I want to see what it's going to look like at full 100% HDR. Color saturation, I try to keep that uh, pretty low, um, usually around 70, 65. Um, I don't like to go 100% with that because I don't like that nasty, to me that's a nasty look, um, but someone might like that look. It's all, it's all your preference. I keep it around 65, between 65 and 75. I'm going to go ahead and hike up the luminosity and see what that does for my image. I'm going to hike up the detail contrast and see what that does for the image. And then I'm going to go to lighting adjustments. You can move the lighting adjustment down and start to watch some of that come, some of your lighting come back in, or switch it to the lighting effects mode. And that's pretty much what I do. I keep my stuff in medium for the most part. I just like the way it looks. I like the style. I like the effect that I get. And then I, I, I move the white point and the black point. These two sliders, in my opinion, are going to be your sliders and are going to give you the, uh, the most effect based off of your luminosity. Um, you see what's happening here. And I do what they call He-Man sharpening. I heard that from Vincent Versace, He-Man sharpening, where, uh, or He-Man editing. You go to the far left and then to the far right to see what that is going to do. And then you find yourself a nice happy medium somewhere where that feels right for you. And that's part of the experimentation process. Take it all the way to the right, take it all the way to the left, and then see what your happy medium is. And then I smooth the highlights after that to see what's what's going to happen with the, the smoothing of the highlights after I do my white point and black point. I'm getting a blown out highlight up here, and I don't really care for that too much, and I would fix that in post-processing. There's not much I can do about it right now. I like what's happening with the rest of the image, so I'm just going to go ahead and sacrifice the quality of that blown out section and fix it later, then have to try and worry about modifying what I've got going on here with this with this preset that I'm building. The gamma is just going to uh, modify the gamma in the image. It's just another one of those light settings. Temperature, if you move it to the left, it's going to make it more blue. You move it to the right, it's going to make it more yellow. Um, somewhere right in the middle is usually pretty good but if your white balance was way off that's one way you can fix somewhat fix your white balance in the tone mapping process I always kick the micro smoothing all the way down because I like the grungy effect that it gives your your HDR photos so what I'm seeing here is that this is a little too gray in those blue areas that, so I'm gonna go ahead and try and bring some of that back by moving the white point over and again, when I do that, when I adjust that white point, it's really blowing out that, that uh, highlight there. And I don't really care for that too much. But there's not much I can really do about it right now because I like the effect I'm getting elsewhere. I can move the luminosity down, but when I move the lum luminosity down, I lose some of that edgy effect that I'm getting on the rest of the image. But if you want to get rid of those blown highlights, you can move the luminosity down. And it's all an experimentation process. I wish I could tell you that every HDR image could get one uh, preset that would work every time like magic. But that's not the case because every bracketed set of photos has its own dynamic range. And none of them are the same. I mean, even they could be shot in the same day in the same light, but you move one direction and there's a little bit more shadow here than there was there. And it's different. You know, the, the settings are different. 
so there's no 100% uh, surefire way to say if you do this this is going to happen but you can manipulate and see what happens during your own process of manipulating the photo just bring some of the smoothness in on those shadows I'm gonna go ahead and bring that luminosity back up a little bit because I'm missing what's going on in that wing okay we'll just keep it uh, right at about six percent and again that blown highlight I would just fix that later in Photoshop there's a couple methods you can use to fix that but this is a photomatics tutorial if you have blown highlights like that you can sacrifice them by moving down the luminosity and that will kick those out and you still have an HDR image I mean there's the there's the original exposure so we're still we're still extracting a lot of that dynamic range even if we sacrifice that luminosity but I really like that edgy look and I'll just fix that later so if I liked what I've done here I can go ahead and save this preset I can slide all the way down you see I have a lot of presets and I can save this preset um, I already have a preset saved for this called Airshow so I'm not going to do that but you can save that preset and uh, you'll always have it there and presets are nice to have because you can look at your presets and you can say okay where's my jumping off point where can I start with this image and that's typically where I start is with one of my presets that I've made before or one of the photomatics presets they're getting much better now and you go ahead and press process now what I like that photomatics has done or HDR soft has done to photomatics I should say is added a finishing touch section I'm gonna go ahead and de-click that um, show this window after processing because if you go up here to utilities and you go to finishing touch you can click this box right here so that every time after your HDR image is done tone mapping this box will appear and I suggest that if you've ever done any um, modifying to a curves adjustment in Photoshop this is basically what what this is right here when you modify the contrast here you can really get some more contrast out of this image by just playing with those curves and this is great because Photoshop is really expensive and those aftermarket programs are crazy expensive and you know for some people that are just your average photographer that are just trying to play and have some fun with some photography because that's what it's all about are really going to be missing out on those expensive programs to help their HDR software that's why I like what what HDR soft has done by adding this finishing touch ability here and you can manipulate these sliders back and forth as you wish I kinda like the mild contrast that's going on here I'm gonna go ahead and back off a little bit on those highlights because again it's blowing that highlight out a little bit more than it should be and take those shadows back just a little bit too then you go into color and you can selectively modify the, the saturation in the color that you do or do not want say I don't want that yellow to appear in the wing or down here in the corner I can I can move that yellow down that yellow slider down and really kind of push those areas away or I can really punch them up and make those areas kind of stick out if I want a more blue I could add some more saturation to just my blues not the saturation as a whole now it still does a global adjustment global meaning over the entire image but it's a better uh, better than having nothing you know and you can sharpen I don't suggest sharpening an image that had no noise reduction on it because you run the risk of just sharpening noise and making the noise worse so if you do run through the HDR process in photomatics and add the noise reduction in the very beginning of it it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and sharpen up your image afterwards which is great because I have had in the past when I used to do my noise reduction in in photomatics this would have been great to have because I could have went ahead and added some sharpness to my image so you can select which which kind of sharpening you want strong mild or uh, medium and you see what's happening that when I do strong it really gets pretty strong in there and it's all it's really doing is sharpening the noise but if I did have noise reduction on the front side that'd been fine my process I would go ahead and bring this into Photoshop do some noise reduction and then do some sharpening afterwards with probably high pass sharpening maybe on the sharp mask but this is a photomatics tutorial so that's how we roll anyway that's photomatics 4.2 in a nutshell I really like what they've done with this finishing touch again I, I kinda like to see it in the actual um, tone mapping process but having it at the end is not a bad feature either so again this is everydayhdr.com I am Blake Rudis and this is photomatics 4.2 go ahead and download the 30-day free trial if you don't have it already if you have it go ahead and update it because they've done a killer job with making it better have a great weekend everyone I will see you next week